All right, we have one more chapter of the One Punch remake to read. It's all ending so quickly. It, even though five chapters felt so intimidating, we've arrived at the catch-up point. This is chapter 127. Credits page is a little expanded this time, but I'm, I'm glad for all y'all to be on board. Flaming Spinach could, could use her name. Uh, and we start with a fight that I had honestly completely forgotten was happening. Um, given that it's not monster versus hero, or not monster in the traditional sense, it wasn't really recorded in any of our, our overview chapters, any of our, our little let's check in with everybody things, because it's Garo. Remember Garo? The way that Garo intersects with the Monster Association arc, I, I think, is just phenomenal. It, it really does have the energy of, like, a dark horse at a tournament, that while everyone's focus is elsewhere, where all these big climactic matches are happening, there's this other competitor who's just been slowly, steadily working his way through the bracket. I'm sorry if all of these fighting game analogies and stuff don't land. It's just genuinely what it evokes in me. And, and hopefully, even if you don't play these sorts of games, you can understand the sorts of moods and experiences that I'm talking about. Yes, it is Garo versus Dark Alley, Dark Shine, Dark Man, whatever his name is. Oh my god! <laughs> what a panel! What a panel! What is this? It's both so comedically absurd and yet so detailed and, and dynamic and hype. Just Garo, like a fifth of the size of his opponent, putting all of these dents, just these tiny dents in his body. But he's ultimately standing tall. He's skidding backwards, but not flinching an inch. And then the flex, just the flex, closing in his muscles, sends Garo flying. Oh, this is going to be a beautiful fight. I remember Murata saying that he asked one to put in more Garo fights, <laughs> that, that he just loved drawing Garo fighting. And so in the remake, of course, we have a bunch more fights that either were completely glossed over in the original um, or didn't even happen at all. We got to see in, in exquisite detail. But what I was thinking, too, is like, you know, Murata knew which fights were coming up that he would have to animate, right? Or not animate. <laughs> Sometimes it seems like animate, but redraw. Um, so I think on top of... Wanting to draw more Garo fights, it's like he wanted to practice for the big ones that were already coming. He knew that this fight was happening, and he wanted to really know how to draw Garo fighting by the time it got to this point. That's my theory. And so I my hype for this is, is off the charts. Look at the And also just... Ugh. The dynamicism of, of the, the location of the fights and stuff, too. Like, the shot of Garo being knocked through wall after wall after wall after wall is just so phenomenal. It, it really does drive home just the the insanity of the geometry of these places. Dark Chan. <sighs> Look at this. This titan. No matter how fast you are, how many tricks you have up your sleeves, you're powerless in front of trained muscles. Oh, man. Oh, Garo is so pissed. <laughs> Imagine what it feels like to hear that. That it's like, nah, all that technique you learned, it doesn't matter. I'm just stronger than you. I just worked out more than you. I lifted more weights than you. That's what actually mattered this whole time. Okay, Garo. Trying something out again. Maybe a variation of his, uh, his, his, his interpretation of Watchdog Man's techniques running around at a super high speed, animalistically. All of these attacks being launched simultaneously. Dark Chan looking a little shocked, a little, whoa, like, didn't expect that. But it doesn't matter. Holy crap, what a punch. God damn, this must be up there with Saitama punches. Not just in terms of the actual canonical strength within the series, but in terms of its depiction, in terms of the iconicness of this punch. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. Your monster play ends here. Huh. Ooh, Garo's so cool. Oh man, Garo's so cool. So as I mentioned before, 
lot of the series puts me in the mood of, of tournaments, of fighting games, melee, stuff like that. And and I, I still stand by the, the fact that Garo is Leffen. Garo, in my mind, will always be Leffen. The association will always run so deep. I, and 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 just this feeling of, of huh? Of like total defiance of like what? <laughs> How can you say it ends here? Like, where do you get off telling me that this is over? So Leffen-esque to me. And this is all super complimentary, by the way. I love Leffen. Leffen is one of my favorite melee players, so... Um, yeah. Now, I feel like people who don't like Garo probably also don't like Leffen. I bet there's that sort of overlap. Anyways! You are super allied Dark Shine. Where's this place? I should be fighting Orochi. Where did that monster go? So Garo's kind of out of it. He's been taking a lot of beatings recently. Orochi was a very severe one. Orochi almost certainly would have finished him off. And he thinks of the kid. That brat, did he manage to escape? Oh, uh, how can you call him a monster? In some ways, Dark Alloy, Super Alloy Dark Shine was totally right when he said your monster play ends here. Garo had just been fighting him on pure instincts, wailing away at him. And after that big punch, Garo was just kind of like, huh, what, what was I doing? <laughs> he, he seems incredibly unmonstrous right now. All of his human clarity has returned to him. What's the matter? It's like I was fighting you in my sleep. Yeah, he really was. I'm not a pretty sight of my sleep. Sorry if I made you think you're going to win. Oh, oh, this is so cool. Cracking all of his his ligaments and stuff. That's what cracks, right? I don't know. Oh, look at this. So minimal, so precise. Just these shots of poses. The the fist of flowing water, of course. Oh, it's so good. Oh, it's just so iconic. I think the great dream of, of Shonen series, going back to, to Dragon Ball, is having characters that are so mismatched. You know, just this ultimate strongman guy versus the ultimate martial artist. You know, just that sense of how could these two possibly interact, and yet they will. They'll fight to the end, and who will win? I think that's that's such a great dream of shonen. It's these dream matchups that we would never see in real martial arts. That even though we incorporate all these tropes that are familiar to us in the real world, we're going to see a fantasy battle that we we couldn't even comprehend. Um, we can never imagine happening in real life, and that it's realized so well here. I think One Punch Man exceeds in this that we explore all the eccentricities of this matchup, all the, the unique aspects of how these two would really fight. Look at this, this train of an arm, this freight train coming in, Garo deftly avoiding it, swinging in for the counter hit, smearing his foot at jet speed velocity against his face, slamming him into the ground, can't be all you've got, can it? Garo, I'm sure, put this guy up pretty highly. Even though he's not as highly ranked as like Tatsumaki, Atomic Samurai, whatever. There's a lot of fighters that are kind of that don't have a matchup with Garo like this. Here, Garo knew he would have to strictly overpower this guy, who's entirely defined by his power. If I defeat you, Dark Shine. We prove that my attack power can succeed against anyone. Exactly, exactly. He knew that in terms of sheer strength, this was the ultimate. It's true. Coordination between all the muscles on his body has improved dramatically. It's the main event coming up next. So I like this. The, the Dark Chan here isn't muscle-headed. He isn't so arrogant that... He recognizes, oh shoot, he actually was asleep before. <laughs> he actually was just fighting me on pure instinct. And now the actual strategy has emerged. Now he'll actually fight me tactically. Be such a waste for your premium muscles to rot away in the Monster Association. Pure Association has the best equipped sports gym. 
you change your mind, thoroughly atone for your sins, and reforge the muscles of your mind, you might become a true hero. Ah, uh, and he thinks back to Gyro Gyro, and turn you into the strongest monster. They're both making these promises of power, of, of luxury, of true recognition. But that's not what he wants. Monster Association. Hero Association. You will both be annihilated tonight. Oh, Garo's so cool. Oh, Garo's so cool. Ah. Allow me to end it right here. He buckles down. His muscles surge even greater. Pumps on top of pumps. Veins on top of veins. Oh, this is such an iconic panel. Look at that. This is one that's right from the webcomic. I think, as I said, it just completely illustrates the huge disparity between the two in terms of technique, body size, and mentality going into the fight, everything. And then it's the, the, the miracle matchup that we actually get to see how this plays out. That lands it would be instant death. Should I deflect that? He anticipates it. He anticipates his normally flowing water-like fists being shredded like paper ribbons. He can't deflect it. Deflection is not possible. Ooh, I thought that was just hypothetical, but I think it actually happened. So much power in a single tackle. Not even that shitty geezer's water stream rock smashing fist can deflect it. Ooh, and then a, 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 a Mortal Kombat-esque x-ray shot. Garo's entire rib cage shattered. His collarbone shattered. Even his spine in behind probably shocked by the blow. Oh my gosh, look at this shot. Oh man, like, 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 this, again, it's not, it's not something that I think you're consciously thinking about when you read manga. Um, but, you know, that's why I, I really want to call these things up. Just the genius in how this is, is shot. The genius in how it's paneled. We have shot of the big tackle bearing down on Garo. We then have a panel of Garo in close-up entering into his mind. We're seeing the just these abstract representation of his attack. There's not actually anything in the real world being deflected or depicted. It's just showing his attempt to deflect and that attempt failing. Okay. Then we return to just kind of the mind of Garo. We're away from this abstract world of the attacks. We're seeing his narration. We're seeing the effect of the attack, the shattered rib cage. So you see how it's it's all very within Garo's headspace, all very within Garo's reactions and stuff like that so what it means is like the actual true nature of the attack has been obscured all the way up until this point and then the contrast between this the extremely internal the extremely uh sensory depiction of it to the physical world this is actually what's happening during that sequence this is the the staggering dramatic effect of the actual attack and what the actual attack looks like. I, at that jump, that huge jump in scale, I think is phenomenally executed. This is one that I think you can find a billion examples of in Dragon Ball Z. Um, I know I often compare the series to One Piece just because that's my favorite shonen and you know it's, it's always on my mind. Um, but I know that Murata and One are both huge devotees of Toriyama. <clears throat> um, as is Oda, for that matter, but it's kind of like they both they took it in different directions. So I think I think Toriyama really knew how to do this well. I can think of a lot of scenes where it's like Goku charging up, Kamehameha. We get the shot of the other the enemy going like Gah! the power is so strong and it's all really close up. It's showing the energy interacting right with the body. Gah! And then, and then it's almost like an, a silence as you cut from that to like a wide shot of just how big that beam is and all the other stuff blowing up around it. Yeah, I think it's the same pattern, right? You see what I'm saying? It's like the same pattern. A lot of series do this. I, I just think it's awesome. 
and and just now it's not like i had this in the bank that i had already like written some essay on it and then i'm like oh it's that thing just now did i realize how good this pattern is so i really wanted to call it it i hope you'll forgive this tangent um but i i i, I think this you know like this is what makes manga so amazing is is really looking at all these little decisions on on the sequencing and the paneling Oh, perfect. It's perfect. It's just, I would have called it if we, if I, I had thought to, but that afterwards you just have this silent shot of the effects of the devastation after the attack. Oh. In order to experience his divine techniques, I had offered to spar with Silverfang in the past. It's mostly the aggressor who forced the action, but he beat me up. No, I didn't sustain any of this damage. My attacks were all deflected, and I got smashed to the ground over and over. I know because I have experienced it, Garland. You are still too green. Ooh, I love it. I love how much that hypes up Bang too, right? Because we never seen we've never seen Bang like fight Garo seriously. He was holding back. Garo even recognized that he was holding back the last time they fought. Even after Bang had seen him as irredeemable, as the hero hunter. As, as someone who needed to be apprehended. Oh, look at this too. This is the same kind of depiction as right at the start of this attack, this whole sequence, where it's just showing an abstract space with flowing water cans. But then it's now, it's now Dark Chan <laughs> smashing it himself. It's been completed. The kind of mystery of his strength at the start has been now revealed. Only been winning so far because of luck. Had you a challenge Atomic Samurai, Tatsumaki, Flashy Flash, or King, you would have been dead before you even got to show off the techniques you've worked so hard on. Don't know what pissed you off so much you started hunting heroes, but you should know your place. I like that Dark Chan here is actually genuinely sympathetic. He's genuinely impressed at how good Garo's technique is, and he's like... He really still wants him, you know, become a hero. <laughs> like, <laughs> you should realize that you haven't achieved true strength yet, that you just got lucky that you weren't wiped out. Ah, but Gara's not done yet. We knew it. Everyone knew it. Uh, it's hard to pre present it dramatically when I, I knew it was coming. Of course they're strong. If you're unable to unleash violence on others without ever questioning whether it's right, like they are, you can win any fight. Means you've thrown away your kindness. Ooh. So the examples he gave again. Atomic Samurai, who, yeah, does seem kind of callous. He's caring for that one kid. He really tried to save that one kid. Just as Garo had saved that exact same kid in the example Garo was thinking of. By blocking all the bullets before they inadvertently shot up the kid inside the, the, the shack. Tatsumaki, who, of course, has never demonstrated an ounce of kindness. Flashy Flash who it does seem very callous, very arrogant. And King, <laughs> who uh, all they can do is look at the battles Sayatama won that they've attributed to him, and it does look quite merciless. So yeah, this is pretty funny. But just that the way that Garo perceives this, that, uh, that Dark Chan lists these off as people of unimaginable strength, people who are just capable of, of smearing him before he can counterattack. But the Garo realizes that these all, all these people are also united in this arrogance, united in this callousness and meanness, that they're, they're not even empathizing, they're not even trying to empathize with all those people that they're cutting down and, and tornadoing and uh, whatever King's technique is called, the atomic gigawave blast beam or whatever. <laughs> it all stinks. The stench of hypocrisy is making me sick. This situation is supposed to be part of your little morality play, too. The protagonist is filled with strength because of the good cause he's fighting for, huh? He's saying some bullshit about me playing monster. Do you people really think you aren't playing hero? Oh, this is so good. All you heroes are shit. And what really grinds my gears is that the shitty you are, the more the public loves you. This is kind of true. All the heroes that Dark Chan named are incredibly powerful. And it's, it's probably in part because they don't let any sort of doubt sneak through. They don't allow the public to see 
any kind of inner turmoil or, or even choice that they're acting as if destroying these villains, these monsters, uh, is, is literally all they can do. It's just a natural part of their being. And, and the public loves that. The public loves this unilateral symbol of, of peace and, and heroism and good triumphing over evil. They don't want someone conflicted. They don't want someone who struggles with moral dilemmas and really considers the, the feelings and the circumstances of the enemy. That's why I fight. I'll put my life on the line to crush justice. Never be able to stop this monster play. All right, Garo, back at it. Him too has the veins a popping, looking even faster than before. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Those damn monsters! Uh, uh, okay, what a cut! What a cut! Oh, this genius is so up when I get back. You can fight a little, but as far as I'm concerned, you're still third rate. It's funny that like. It really is like a persona that Flash is putting on. That we could see genuine shock, genuine awe and admiration and, and worry emerge on his face during the earlier incidents. But then now that he's kind of cooled off a little bit, now that it, that they're kind of just back on this adventure, he's back to his arrogant ways. He's back to just being so dismissive of Saitama and everything. Still rough around the edges. You need to refine your skills. No, it's difficult. Ideally, you want to finish the target swiftly with a single strike. <laughs> Composite attack for the leaving behind a trace so nobody would be aware of your existence. He mentions this before when I was rereading chapter 122 that Saitama proposes just busting down walls until they find someone. And Flash at first is like, I don't like leaving a trace. But it really, it's such a stupid thing to care about. You can tell that this is uh, training from the ninja village. Oops, that might be a webcomic spoilers. I'm trying to remember. No, I think they mentioned because he knows the other ninjas. Anyways, only be considered first rate once you've entered this realm. Anyone noticing? You sure about that? That kind of lonely. Also, chasing fame as a hero. Show me what a first rate fighter looks like when I face off against the Monster King. Make sure you don't hold me back. No need for that. I'll do it. Uh. Battle of the scale, I hope Sensei's clothes are okay. <laughs> Genos, of course, not at all worried about Saitama getting hurt. Only worried about the clothes. He knows that's the only thing that could get damaged. And Saitama would be super pissed. So he, of course, has received the information from Drive Knight. He's now trying to fight, run back quickly to inform the heroes on how best to fight. But yeah, this is all, the, the, again, just the comedy of these scenes is so fantastic. The, the irony that they're chasing after the Monster King. They're both kind of pumped to fight the Monster King. The other monster is like, you guys are going to get owned by the Monster King. And yet Saitama already one-punched the Monster King like 20 chapters ago. <laughs> and just no one knows. And he might not even remember. Like, Orochi did introduce himself at the time, but Saitama was not listening. Um, I, I love it. It's it's very simple irony. It's like the, the defining joke of the series. But just the way that it's gone on for so long, and they keep having these conversations without knowing the truth. It's very funny. Okay. So Garo, relentlessly fighting. Dark Alloy, confident. As he said before, not even Silver Fangs were able to hurt him, Silver Fangs attacks. But that he wasn't able to retaliate was the difference. So he feels like he can just guard against this. His defense is absolute. And once Garo stops attacking, he can land the killing blow. But that said, am I seeing things, or his movements actually getting faster? It's pretty hype. I also love the fact that we had this battle, we had a little comedic interlude, and now we're back to the battle. How long is this chapter? Okay, okay. I just, I'm getting hungry. <laughs> if this turned out to be 100 pages, we might be suffering by the end. I'm not seeing things, he's actually getting faster. Getting faster with an alarming momentum. Ooh, not just accelerating, but the rate of his acceleration, his jerk, is is increasing as well. And maybe even the rate of jerk, the rate of acceleration, acceleration is increasing. Third order, what is that called? Snap? I'm going to look it up, <laughs> even though I'm getting so hungry. Uh, acceleration, jerk, 
<laughs> yeah, after jerk, it's snap, crackle, pop. That's right, that's right. I think that's actually so funny. Pop, also known as pounce, is the sixth derivative of position. Velocity, acceleration, jerk, snap, and crackle. So pop is like the last one I think that's named. Anyways, yeah, so maybe Garo is even popping. He's literally popping off. That is his acceleration, his accelerations, rate of accelerations, rate of accelerations, rate of acceleration is accelerating. <laughs> it feels like dozens of martial artists focusing their attacks on me. He keeps bearing down on me like a tidal wave. I love this narration from Dark Chan as well. That what starts as kind of like strategic thinking kind of subsists into just fear and awe. What is going on? For one instant, the word defeat came up in my mind. Oh, it's just like a few chapters ago when they were talking about how the feeling of fear, so long forgotten, had begun to emerge in the S-Class heroes' minds. The word defeat, for one instant, came up in his mind. Impossible, absolutely impossible. I cannot lose in a clash of physical bodies. My way of building my muscles is different from Prisoner and Tank Top, the other two big muscle heads of the S-Class. Water stream rocks meshing fist in the left hand. Whirlwind iron cutting fist in the right hand. This is how he can be broken. Both geezers join forces. This is Garo's mind now. We're shooting a series of attacks. Even this incredible fortress of muscle can be torn apart without mercy. A secret joint technique that even a world-class genius cannot normally perform alone. Cross Fang Dragon Slayer Fist it was acquired by him subconsciously by forcing himself through suicidal, suicidal training and dojo challenges in the hero hunts. This man is able to copy acquire physical techniques that go beyond water stream rock crusting fish and whirlwind iron cutting fist. So this is actually a technique that no one has ever used single-handedly. Only the combination of bang and bomb so far have we seen this this combination, this this double fisted power. So right now this narration, uh, at first, and this first panel on this page is definitely Garo thinking. But then the second panel is kind of like the omniscient narrator that sometimes comments on like Saitama's activities and stuff. It's actually really crazy. Uh, like, who is this character? <laughs> who, who is talking? Um, and the fact that it has like the jagged speech bubbles and stuff is really weird. Who is talking? Who is talking? <laughs> I'm so curious. <laughs> but uh, I'm even more curious to see, will this be enough? Together with Silver Plan, they're known as the twin pillars of the hero world. The overwhelming defense of Super Alley Darkshine, the one who is considered to be at the pinnacle of physical combat, Garo did not falter. Who is talking? In a battle against the strong, the harder he is pushed, the more he can unleash his true ability and experience growth. Okay. Dark Alloy counters back. Don't get too carried away. Unleash my full power. Who was talking, though? I'm genuinely so curious. Let me know. Who's talking? <laughs> It's like the narrator, right? Who is the narrator? Is it God? <laughs> ah, I'm so curious. The super alloy bazooka. An unprecedentedly strong fist. Before we saw him punch, and as I said, it was kind of like Sai Thomas punches, where it was kind of understated. It was just a punch. But here, it's, it's flaming. It's got that aura of speed around it. So we know this is truly unleashed. This is his series, serious series equivalent. Oh my god, and Garo meets it head on. No deflection, no dodging, no counterattack, but simply the fist. Garo's limiter. The clothes around him exploding off as the reverberations of the punch echo through his flesh and bone. What's this? His body? A monster? Garo's limiter is starting to break. Ooh, look at how this is drawn! Oh, Murata! <laughs> every time, every time I think I've seen the range of Murata's artistic aesthetic. Something brand new like this. 
undershaded, but dynamic, with thick line widths, and all of the scribbly, inky action. And just the feeling of swirling power that emanates from this image. Oh boy. Oh, and we know, we know this is just a hint of Garo's power to come. All right. Here's some parallels relations I wanted to share that literally nobody asked for. Well, I, I think this is pretty cool. Ah, yeah, this is neat. He, he does the exact same posing as uh, Bang does when Bang is pre uh, preparing to fight Garo oh so many chapters ago. Really nice, really cool stuff. Thank you for pointing this out. I, I knew that they they had a sense of like iconicness, but I didn't realize it would be so directly matched. And I love this too. I had just gotten a hole put in my torso anyways. And then it seems like in this first hint at true monsterfication, that same spot is having all of this power circling into it. Very nice, good catches. Okay. We are caught up, we are caught up, we are caught up yet again, probably next chapter in just a few more days, but uh, I'm sure glad to be caught up on another one. We still have like, oh boy, a whole lot of series to get caught up on, but we're getting there, we're getting there, bit by bit we're getting there. So uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll join you with the next batch of chapters real soon. Bye bye.